Hi everyone, today I want to talk a little bit about some of the uh, frequently asked questions and best practices that you can do to um, when you're actually coming to springs and gathering your own water to actually make the whole experience better and um, some things you can do to help maintain the properties of the water that you're, you're gathering. Now we're talking about a living, structured, wild food here in the form of spring water. And what you want to do is you want to make sure you're using strictly glass containers for, um, for this water. And not only glass containers, but glass with cork. And the reason we do that is because this is a completely inert substance and they're both natural. I mean, glass is, um, glass happens every time lightning is going to hit sand, you're going to get glass right there. And um, cork is actually the bark of a tree. So, you know, we realize that there's a lot of people doing plastic out there and there are some BPA free plastics. But real in reality, I've never really, I've never really been safe with any of those plastics. And even the ones like the better bottles and stuff like that, to me, plastic is plastic and glass is glass. And they're completely different substances. And, um, you know, there are some advantages of plastic as far as weight being lighter and less expensive and stuff like that. But really, when you're getting into this stuff, you might as well go all the way and just, um, just avoid that mess completely. So just stick with glass and stick with cork. Now, basically, what we're talking about is we're talking about these large glass bottles. And where you get these bottles is you get them at any wine and beer making store. Any place, you find them all over the place where they sell uh, beer brewery supplies. And uh, now this bottle here, this is, um, they come in three main sizes. This is the bigger one. And this is approximately 23 liters. It weighs about 66 pounds uh, when it's completely filled. And the cost of this is about $25. And you got to be really, really careful with that. I mean, 66 pounds does, doesn't sound like a lot, but it, it just feels heavier than it is. And then you get into this medium size, which I like. This is not too small, not too big, uh, and it's easily handled by a guy like me. This is 18.8 liters, 18.9 liters, and um, I'm just trying to think how much I paid for this. This is about $19, $19, $20. And actually, you can find these at some places used, uh, this one I got, uh, I got a bunch of them used for $10. Now this size here, okay, this size here, this is, uh, this is a size that a lot of people like, especially women, because it's extremely easy to handle. This is 11 liters, and 11 liters, this is going to weigh about, uh, 35 pounds, I forgot to mention, um, this one here, uh, the 18.8 .8 liter, this is about 55 pounds, so that's not bad. So, 23 liters, 66 pounds. 18.9 liters, 55 pounds when filled, and the 11 liter, this is uh, 35 pounds. And like I said, this is uh, this is very, 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 very easy to get into once you start getting in the habit of doing this. It's just a matter of uh, it's just a matter of making it part of your um, part of your life, really. So, and although it is a lot of work, um, really, when I when I come to when I come and get my water from these springs, it's actually a great experience. It's a sacred experience. The water to me is sacred. The spring is sacred. The bottles are sacred because this is what I'm going to be building, building my blood out of. So to me, it just doesn't get any better than that. And uh, now also, what I do is I store these in the coldest, darkest, um, coldest, darkest place uh, I can find. So you want to keep them away from light and you want to keep them away from oxygen and you want to keep them away from heat to maintain the, the structure of the water. And also while you're transporting them in the car, definitely wrap them up in some sort of dark blanket or um, a vest or something to protect them from uh, heat, light and uh, oxygen as well. well. I mean obviously the oxygen is going to be the core part, but it's really the, the light and the heat that you want to keep away from. Light specifically. Light is going to go in here and it's going to actually destructure this water. Now what I do is I store these usually in my fruit cellar and I have a black comforter that I wrap around them. And then what I do is, um, especially in the summer months because the fruit cellar isn't that cold in the summer, I funnel them into um, something like this which is a glass, uh, a glass bottle of four liters. And then I put a couple of these in the fridge, leave it overnight, and then it's nice and cold for me to drink in the morning. Now also, um, I wanted to mention a little bit about uh, some testing equipment. Let's see here it is. Oh yes, here it is. Okay, just some basic simple tools you can get to get different, um, 
uh, idea of the type of water you're drinking. Um, you can get into a TDS meter. You usually get these on eBay for around $30. You can also get into a pH meter, which is going to give you an idea of the potential of hydrogen in the water, 7.0 being neutral. Anything above that alkaline, anything below 7.0 would be acidic. I personally like to drink uh, acidic or slightly acidic water. I just find it more of a hydrating experience. And also you can get into a, a temperature, uh, just a, like a kitchen thermometer type of thing. And these, you can get them for about $10, $12 at any department store. All right. Now, I also wanted to mention about um, uh, getting into these things here. These are, um, if you're interested in bacteria analysis, here in Ontario, we have uh, what, what they call public health labs that are set up for people to test, uh, to get a bacteria analysis of their wells and stuff like that. So you can also use this service for your local spring as well. And what it's going to do is you're going to get, you're going to go there and get these special bottles. You don't crack them open until you're actually at the spring. And um, what you do is you basically just open it up and fill the sample bottle, these special sample bottles, to the, uh, to the line that they have over here. And what this is going to do is, within a couple of business days, now you've got to keep this cold and, and deliver it to the um, public health lab for analysis. Fill out all the paperwork and make sure you fill out the paperwork exactly, otherwise they're, uh, they're, not gonna, they're just going to dismiss it. And what you're going to get back is you're going to get uh, a bacteria analysis of two properties. You're going to get total coliform per 100 mil, and you're also going to get a reading for total E. coli per 100 mil. Now, total coliform is um, not necessarily from uh, human or animal waste. Um, that could uh, total coliform can be generated from soil or vegetation and stuff like that. But if you get into E. coli, then you're talking about definitely animal or human waste uh, products. So that's one thing, that's one little trick, and that's a completely free service. Now, I don't know about other provinces or other places in the States. They might have their own thing set up for that. So uh, that's one thing to keep in mind. But I do find it useful. Not that I'm overly paranoid, but I mean, I have drank uh, from many, many springs, and you know, there has been total coliform in there many, many times. And there's been, a, you know, at least half a dozen times where I know that I've drank an E. coli. But you got to remember, E. coli isn't necessarily the worst thing in the world. I mean, it's obviously something that I don't look forward to, <laughs> but it's not exactly the um, the end all, be all of uh, good water, bad water either. Because, like I said, you're getting E. coli in uh, food supply sources at all at all times that you're not even aware of. But, anyways, having said that, I do like to drink water that I know is usually zero and zero on both those properties. Okay, so that summarizes the nuts and bolts and best practices and frequently asked questions about how do you do it, where do you get the bottles and all that stuff. And now I just wanted to talk a little bit about the water itself. Um, coming to springs and gathering your own water uh, from a living wild source like this is really a life-changing thing and it's about as profound as it gets when you get into health, vitality, different levels of consciousness and stuff like that. And what I'm talking about here is I'm talking about drinking the best water ever. And doing that, you're actually going to be changing your blood. Once you change your water, you change your blood. Once you change your blood, you change your life. And this this whole experience of gathering spring water is, is just that. It's experiential. It's something that you need to actually go out and do for yourself to actually get the download on this stuff. I mean, we can talk all we want about different types of water and dead water versus living water, and to me, it's very obvious. Having drank tap water pretty much all my life and then moving on to drinking reverse osmosis for 10 years, probably the 10 worst years of my life, and then a brief period of drinking plastic tea or quote-unquote spring water in plastic that's been killed in some process, this, this experience of coming to a real spring and gathering your water in glass and cork, there's really, really nothing like it. And it is literally the most profound thing you can do for yourself on any level. So at this point, I'm going to uh, end the video. And at this, uh, just like I said, if you have any questions or if you have any comments, please feel free to leave them here. And feel free to contact me if you have any questions at all. Um, that's about it. Have the best day ever and take it easy.